Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Thank you all for watching us today. Today on a special station rig, we're at the Princeton First Aid and Rescue Squad. We're going to be doing their brand new rescue. We got Lieutenant Ari here and Chief Diff. They're going to walk us through all the compartments and see what they have. It only took me a whole block to get it. <laughs> Introducing the Capnospot. Capnospot is revolutionizing medicine by eliminating the guesswork. A pneumothorax is a potential life-threatening condition that may arise from trauma. Swift treatment can be a lifesaver. As a paramedic, confidently mastering needle decompression is crucial. Numeric, the inventor of the Capnospot, presents a solution that simplifies proper needle decompression placement. No matter the noise level, you know you are placing the needle in the correct spot. There is no need to change what you do. This device works with all your existing decompression needle sets. Simply apply the capna spot to the end of your needle and be confident in your success. This device turns from blue to yellow in the presence of carbon dioxide, giving you visual evidence that you have succeeded. Gone are the days of listening for that gush of air. Perform the skill with assurance, knowing you're doing it right the first time. Fast, effective, easy. Say goodbye to uncertainty and welcome in the confidence that comes with this user-friendly device. Okay, now that we're back in the engine bay, how about we pull around and uh, talk about it? Sounds yeah, good. good. That was an awesome ride. Thank you for taking me around for doing that. Absolutely. This is a big truck though, isn't it? It's it's a lot of truck, it <laughs> certainly is. Tell us what we have here, first of all. So this is a 2022 Pierce Velocity. Um, it's a combination rescue, um, but it's not a traditional combination rescue. Normally you have either to walk around or walk in, and we're kind of a little bit of both, but not quite a complete walk in. So we have the ability to walk from our cab back, but not completely through, and from the, the back of the truck, up but not completely through that way either i'm so. very interested in seeing how that's done but it's, let's start with the driver's compartment tell me what you have how it functions and all the different buttons and, and things so a lot of cool features we have with this truck uh, so we don't have your normal run-of-the-mill step so one of the things that we wanted to do we wanted to have you know easy safe access in and out of the cab so the traditional very vertical ladder basically that you have on these trucks we wanted to go with a really more of a, a gradual step into. Yep. Um, so we have an air actuated step. So when this door opens up, step will fold out. Nice. Um, and it's a big platform down so It's a big platform. Um, you know, not every firefighter and rescue tech is a small person. So you got to have <laughs> a lot of space here to be able to get yourself in and out of the cab. Right. Um, so nice big platform, plenty of handholds. Okay. Nice easy access to get up into the truck. Right. I noticed the lights on the... So yeah. they're, they're, they're backlit, oh, okay. so even at night, so this truck glows. So we really bring the, the sun out at night. Um, all the, the handles all the way down the truck are backlit. Nice. Um, Safety-wise, when you're driving, it, it kind of pulls out so you can see all the way down the truck and see where each compartment is and where your wheels are. Okay. Um, so you know handling down the road where you're on as far as the length of the truck. Okay. And to get in the driver's seat, what do you have? Obviously it's the instrument panel for, you know, regular driving, but what are all these other buttons? Some of the stuff that we have up in here. So once you get into the cab, so your normal instrument clusters up here, um, you're monitoring a, a lot of the stuff that you would in a normal semi truck. So you got air stuff you have to monitor, your speed, oil, oil pressures, things of that nature. Up top, this is all of your, your emergency lights. So we've got your emergency master switch to turn on all the emergency lights for the truck. And then we have steam lights. So we've got seam lights all over the place on this truck. Uh, one of the big functions it is, it's an air and light truck. Okay. So we need to have a lot of lighting that we bring to the scene at night. Wow. Um, so all of that can get controlled from right here in the cab. Okay. On the side here, um, we've got uh, Pierce's display where it gets you all of your 
digitalized versions of all your gauge clusters. So okay. you can kind of customize this, pull up different things, let you know the generator's engaged or not. So we do have a 360 camera system on the truck, okay. uh, kind of similar to a typical passenger car, um, but we can select different views to help us, you know, if we turn our turn signal on, it'll show the side of the truck with the length that it is so we can see where we're going. Yeah, a lot of technology involved in that. I also noticed you have like headsets hanging above you. What are those for? So the headsets integrate with our radio system. So depending on what we're doing, it can get pretty loud. Um, so if we're going to a fire or we're operating on a technical rescue scene, um, these are all, all wireless headsets. Uh, so this is a new uh, version of what we have in this truck. When we put these headsets on, it's usually, oh, you forget it's on, it's tethered to the truck, you gotta step out and yeah, get yeah. back in. These are completely wireless. Okay. Um, so they intercom for every seat position in the truck. So we can continue wearing them on scene. Um, and we have intercoms so we can all hear each other. So even if it's a loud scene, we can all communicate. Yeah. And it also ties us back to our radio system. That's a good way to do that because, you know, I may get out to a scene and say, you know, maybe I just need some cribbing. But when I get there, I say, no, nope, I'm going to need uh, a strut or something to hold that onto. Mm -hmm. If my headsets are on, all I have to do is talk regularly, tell the guy that's still back at the engineer's department to, to grab me the right tool. Yep, absolutely. Saves you a lot of steps. Yeah, that's awesome. So continuing our way back and around the truck here. So coming into the, the back, another fold down step. Um, so this is a five man cab, Okay. you can call it. So it's five seat positions that have SCBA packs. We then have the two additional seats in the back um, so it extends it to a seven man cap. Okay. So those two seats do not have SCBA on. So them. when I think of typical EMS and stuff like that and rescue, they don't necessarily always have C SCBAs. Are you a Correct. firefighter also? We do both. Okay. Um, so we, you know, the truck often gets confused as a fire truck because it's that's the nature of you know the size of the truck. You know what we do. There's no water on this truck. There's no pump. There's no tank. Um, completely different. It's a, it's a big toolbox, but it does car carry manpower. So our firefighters that go to a scene, not everyone's gonna have to be here to fill air bottles. That's right. the primary purpose of the truck. Okay. We do have additional people that'll do firefighting as well. So you can assist with the fire departments, whether Correct. that's with RIT or even structural firefighting, you guys can go right in. Yep, and we do also use the, the SCBAs for our confined space stuff, depending on what kind of application we're doing. Okay. Um, so if it's a larger access area or a longer distance, we use the SCBAs to to do those okay, so when I was looking on this online, actually I was looking at National Fire Radio, they did a little podcast or a video for you. Mm -hmm. This has something unique inside. Can I step inside and show Absolutely. the viewers? What's unique with this is that we have a walk-in, so the, the cab technically ends here. So we have an opening that will go into this space, and this space is designated so that we can do um, our, our change of gear back here. So if we need to put on rope harnesses or our dry suits, uh, ice suits, We've got a changing area back here that we can you know, have space, not have to worry about getting tied up with one of the packs, and we can come back here and get changed. Right, right. Yeah, the other thing that I noticed is it helps you with the environment. You know, many times we show up, the environment is not always friendly to us. By having an environment like this, it can keep me warm in the winter, and it can cool me off in the summer. Absolutely. So you know, even if the rest of the crew is doing land-based stuff, and you know, I'm the one that was just in ice water, and I want some heat, I can crank the heat on back here and not have to, you know, have everyone else sweating when I'm trying to get warmed up from being in ice water. Right. But what's really unique about this truck that I'm looking at right now is, as he mentioned before, it's not a pass through all the way. This is what they, what do they call it? A one third? What yeah, it's it? a one two one third two thirds. So basically, okay. a third of the of the box. So this end wall, and then on the other side is all equipment. And that gives us a lot of flexibility. Um, there's a lot of safety considerations when you have people next to equipment. So when we don't have, you know, 100 pound trench panels sitting right next to you, you're not as concerned about as you're going down the road. So having all the equipment separated from the seating positions gives us a little bit more safety. This is awesome. This is the first time I've ever seen this. I think you're gonna start a trend here, Chief, for more people doing these kind of things. And it's funny, you know, ha has, as history goes around, rescues used to always be walk-ins, and then that was like a dirty word and had to be a walk around. <laughs> yeah. Now you're seeing walk-ins coming back. Right, but this one's split. This one's a little different. This is a little different. Yeah. A little different uh, venue. All right, we'll go back outside and take a look at the rest of the truck as we go around, if that's all right with you. Absolutely. And Ari, if you want to take us into the next cabinet. Nice. So, as Chief said, it's basically a big toolbox, right? So uh, every compartment has different sets of tools. Uh, and this one, we've got our farm jacks, so we can do those high lifts if we need to. Sometimes we have to be able to clean up a scene or get into some different kind of areas. And then we've got our breaker boxes here and then just various small tools. Oh, your handset so tools, yeah. Can, you know, we can repair a car at the side of the road if we had to. <laughs> right, right. Pretty much. Or dismantle it as we need to. Exactly, <laughs> yes. 
Right. I love the fact that you had the slide outs. And I noticed that this seems a little bit taller than most of the other trucks I have. You don't have the, the lower compartment. Right. Why is that? Um, is that because of water? Is that one of our main reasons? So really yeah. the, the main benefit of this is that you can do either underbody compartments or you can do what we do um, and we ask Pierce for is it's a lowered skirt. Lowered skirt. So basically what they do between the axles is they have the ability to drop the body down lower so you can get a higher length. Um, not as important with this compartment, but with some of the other ones, we have really tall struts and stuff. Yeah. We need as much vertical access as possible. So being able to have the extra four to six inches going down and not having a, a basically a floor in the way gives us a lot more access for it. Right, because some of those struts, you'd have to put in horizontally or on an angle then to get them in. And with this dropping that extra inches, you don't have to. And it, it's a big deal, especially That's with huge. the- That's huge. Yeah. yeah, and we, didn't, we don't have the, the horizontal space with that walk-in. So we have to make sure all of our vertical equipment stays vertical okay. so that we're not cutting into the middle of the truck, which has different equipment in it. Uh, okay. And another thing is that even though this is not a high water vehicle, technically speaking, we that's one of the big things that we deal with a lot of water rescue here in Princeton and having big drawers that can be filled with water is not an ideal, <laughs> right, an ideal right. setup. Yeah, usually it's the rusty chains or the, uh, the old wood cribbing that gets put down there anyway. Exactly, and then it ends <laughs> up moldy. Uh, so various struts for vehicle stabilization. We, okay. we do uh, all of our own motor vehicle. Could you explain to our viewers what a strut actually does? Right, so these struts, are there's different sizes, different weight limits, and basically if you have a car or any kind of vehicle that is on its side or tipped over or in a precarious position that's not on all four tires, or even if it is, we can use these to stabilize it in place so that when our crew are going in there to try to get somebody out, we're not worried about it rolling over on them or, or, or changing position really. This is more stuff for the struts for the most part. We've got our winches and tie downs and everything like that. Okay. These are air tubes for the inflatables that will also for stabilization, right? Yep, yep. so that, that's for the, the low pressure, medium pressure airbags. Yep. Okay. Um, a lot of the stuff you'll see on this, so we've got like an empty tray here, we've got extra space here. Um, we built this truck for expansion. So we didn't build this truck so the day it arrives, that's its final setup and we yeah. have no room. Right. Uh, we, we knew we were gonna add to our you know, rescue tool selection. Uh, we know there's a lot of other Paratech equipment that we're gonna be putting on this truck. We wanna make sure that we have room for expansion. Um, so when we designed it, it's not, you have an entire compartment to put the stuff in and spread it all out. We told the, the fab guy, hey, listen, we want you to be as compact as possible and Tucker from Fire and Safety was able to cut down on the amount of space that he needed and left us with an entire tray open for yeah, that, the next that's generation huge. of tools. Yeah, that's huge. The other thing that I'm noticing right off the bat when I look at this, it doesn't look cluttered either. All too often I see a lot of these rescues that they're like, oh, we do everything, but then everything's just kind of thrown in the cabinet and they, it really doesn't have a space. It's in there, but I kind of got to dig through it and stuff like that. You know, this is, is very well organized. Well, and also this is basically like a pegboard system like you'd have in your own home shop. So you can move things around and change attachments and put whatever you want at any time. So right. if a piece of equipment actually becomes obsolete, we can get rid of it also. You're right. So Chief, I noticed you have some kind of venting up top. Can you tell me what that's all about? So this was something that while we were going through the process of building the truck, we were trying to get, you know, common issues solved. So a lot of the times we're going out in bad weather. So it's raining out, we do a rescue, throw the stuff back in the truck, come back to the station, now you gotta pull all that stuff off, it's gotta lay out in your bays, it's gotta dry, then it's gotta go back on, and God forbid you get a call somewhere in between, throw it all on. Right. We don't have to worry about that. So we do our call, stuff's wet, we put it back on the shelves. As soon as we come back and plug the truck in, air circulation starts throughout the truck. So every exterior compartment's got airflow that'll come through it. So as soon as that, that shoreline gets plugged in, it'll run for 12 hours, circulates air, gets everything dried out, so you don't have to worry about things rusting in the compartment, truck and stay in service for all the equipment on That is a huge idea on that I've never seen before. You know, I, can I can't tell you how many times I've come back and had to lay it all out. And you know, sometimes we forget things when we throw it back on yeah, in that emergency. Absolutely. That's huge. Yep, big innovation. Yeah. Got your saw. Power tools. Yeah. yeah. The stuff sometimes, to cut things apart. Sometimes you just need to cut things apart, right? So we've got, and you know, we, we do, uh, rescues in the in the woods sometimes we have a, a tow path along the canal here that we need to get to and there is definitely sometimes organic matter in the way right uh, so we've got our chainsaws we've got our, uh, our concrete and asphalt saws and then more up top i also noticed that you have both you have the electric and the combination of fuel yes right because uh in certain environments you know you just want to make sure that you can not have to go charge or change a battery we've got plenty of power in here and plenty of ways to do that but i i think that the industry overall is changing to more and more electric as the electric tools are as powerful 
and probably more reliable than the gas powered ones. And I assume this is just a skirt to keep the body clean as you bring out the bigger tools? Correct, right. yeah, we don't yeah. want to chip up our paint. Um, <laughs> and another thing with the, the battery tools is some of the stuff that we do in confined spaces, you have right. environmental issues. So if we have to be dealing with fumes or we're running these things inside, now we don't have to worry about the fumes of the saws. We got all batteries. That's awesome. But even this small detail, putting a little skirt on there so you keep your paint fresh, that's a, a brilliant idea. It's almost a trick of a trade. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> well, and uh, it's actually, it's not just, you know, a, a nice thing to have. The other thing is that if you hit a piece of, uh, if you hit part of the chainsaw blade against a piece of metal, you could spark. Right. right? So it's right. a safety concern too. Okay. This is where that air light comes into play that you're telling me about, right? right. So right here we can fill tanks, yeah. which is pretty great. Uh, and we can do all that here. Uh, we've also got our pretty heavy duty water prop here. Okay. So if we need to empty out a, a basement or a well or whatever it might be that's filled with a lot of water, this will move a couple hundred gallons a minute. Okay. And I noticed this unique kind of flip down here. What's this about? So uh, what's cool with this feature, so not everything that you're doing, you're, you're not constantly running around doing stuff. So with the air cascade, you get on scene, you set up the lights, you're waiting. Yep. So a lot of the stuff, you're you're just waiting for people to use their air and then fill their bottles. So this doubles as a good seat. So Perfect. you have a seat here, you, you can put your equipment down. If you're working your, um, you've got your log for what bottles you fill. Yeah. You can put the bottles there. Yeah. And then it also doubles as a step. So okay. For whatever reason, we have to come up here, do service to the compressor, step to get us up to a higher level to right. get the, the higher equipment. And if you just want to have a front row seat to the remote control for our big lighting tower, you can do that as well. Okay. That's what these are for. Okay. So we can, as uh, Chief said, we can bring the sun essentially, and <laughs> this allows us to control that somewhat remotely. Right. Man, there's a lot of newer features that we haven't seen on rescue trucks with the steps and you know putting an air light and everything else. It's, it's really pretty cool. Huh? Uh, th so these are anchor points. So when we do our rope systems, um, we can use the truck as an anchor. So if we were working off the side of like a roadway and we had to work down off, like off level, we can actually tie back to the truck. So these okay. are all rated for rope systems that we can tie off of either up top or any of the anchors along the sides or off the back of the truck. Okay, and then you have, I assume, a receiver hitch down low on the side then, right? So we have a, actually an extension that will come out right here. Okay, there it so is. We run off the side, so yep. we can have a, we've got a 9,000 pound portable winch can hook up to any of the, the three off the back, yeah. off the side, off the middle, or off the front. Okay, okay. Do you guys then, for the rescue, uh, are you able to create the um, tripod to do a, a, a rescue so we that can, way? Yep, so we can actually set up a monopod system running off the side of the truck. So we'll actually hook up to uh, the top anchors right. um, and create uh, basically a, a monopod off the side. Okay. And do heavy lifting and moving using the truck as the anchor. That's awesome. I mean, it's 35 tons of an anchor point. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> no, no. All right. So this is what I would typically know as a, another walk-in, right? Right. So you saw the one third. This is the two thirds. Okay. Two thirds. Um, so uh, inside we've got nice step built in. I like that yeah. too. So we've got all of our tonnage and our, our trench boards are in here so that we can stabilize structures as well as uh, trenches. We've got an extra stokes in here and we can access all that as well. And then up here is our access to the roof. Okay. You want to follow us up there? Yeah, you got something on the roof? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, the biggest point of, of the roof access is really to be able to control those, uh, the monopod top anchors. Okay. So instead of having to get up a ladder on the side of the truck, right. you can go up on the roof and adjust it so that you have more space and it's safer to operate on the, the roof and not off the side of off the truck. Off of a ladder, because the ladder can slide out from underneath you and stuff like that. It's a cool view if you want to see it. Yeah, yeah. And it's a nice easy ladder too. Sounds like your squad's going out. So these are our light towers all the way through. Okay, go. so the these, night scan tower. Yep, so these are our dual light towers, which uh, they are so bright. It is, uh, it's pretty amazing. So nighttime is not an issue with this <laughs> truck. And so yeah, so these will raise up and then come up pretty high up. I love that it's diamond plated and sturdy too. I didn't feel like I was walking on the top of a car roof or anything no, like that. Yeah. This is nice and sturdy. And he, as he men Chief mentioned before, you have the tie downs that you can adjust right Yeah, so up these here. anchor points are pretty heavy duty. Right, yeah, and you don't get any sweat or nothing. Very safe up here. Yeah. So the one thing that I noticed as I'm coming out is you have a complement of ladders. You have regular extension ladder, you have a roof ladder, you have your attic ladder. But even up front, you said you had the stoke. Yep. It looks like you have a scoop stretcher that's even a foldable. Yep. And you even have a little giant. I mm -hmm. mean, everything that you need is in the back of this truck. And there's still space for more. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the uh, winch that you were talking about, right, Chief? Yep, this is the winch. Uh, when we, we spoke with the 
uh, the fab team, basically you had to trust the process. So they're fantastic. Basically all I had to tell them was like, listen, think about your, your heavy duty rigs. So your, your tow trucks, your, your big rig rescue stuff, that's what this is gonna be. He's like, I got you. <laughs> so this is all set up with all of our heavy lifting moving, all of our, our grade 80 chains, um, all of our chain binders, our heavy lifting slings. So basically we wanted this to look like one of your big um, tow trucks. Yeah, the like. heavy rescue trucks, um, yeah, or the tow trucks. That's, yeah. you know, a lot of the stuff that we do, we're working in conjunction with one of those big, heavy uh, wreckers. Right. If we have a tractor trailer or something that rolled onto a car, we need to work seamlessly with them. So all of our, our stuff has to be rated. It has to be the same stuff that they're using. That's all in this compartment. Okay. Tell us a little bit now, before we continue on, about your area. Where, where are we in New Jersey here? So we're in Mercer County. We're up on the, the northern side of things. Um, so we butt up right with Route 1. So Route 1 is kind of the major uh, run through um, going north south. And then we have uh, 95 as well. So we've got you know, major roadways. They aren't our primary areas. But again, having a, a, a truck and a toolbox like this, we're going to get called out of our area to help uh, basically bring the equipment to help other departments do rescues. Okay. So we are very active with social media. That's mostly his brainchild. All right. Um, so we, we're very active with the different social media platforms. We do a lot of the stuff through our website. Um, I'll, I'll let him kind of get into the details with that okay. stuff. Yeah. So my background is actually in process optimization stuff. And so we actually created a pretty automated uh, hiring and recruiting uh, application process that okay. takes somebody from interested in being an applicant to on a rig as I think the fastest we could possibly do it. Okay. So, uh, and yeah, we're active on, we're very active on Instagram and uh, we're on LinkedIn and Facebook also and constantly trying to do interesting things in different mediums. So on Instagram, we are PFARS168, so P-F-A-R-S 168. And then on Facebook, it's just Princeton First Aid and Rescue Squad and the same on LinkedIn as well. Yeah. So if you guys are out there and watching this video, you like this truck, you like this squad, definitely come down, put it in an application. They always can use your help. Absolutely. Uh, and these are those anchor points that we were talking about before. They're so heavy duty. I love those. Right. Things. So just more stuff for stabilizing chocks and uh, pretty much a lot of chocks. Yeah, well, um, you're cribbing for the different yeah. things and you got their step chocks, which you actually are doing a combination. They all used to be wood and now you're switching over to the composites. So we're switching, yeah, mainly to the composites for the ability to kind of clean them. Yeah. Uh, so it gets really expensive going through wood. The price of lumber is yeah. insane. It, it, it's crazy now. Um, but this stuff being able to clean it and to not get contaminated with the oils and the other material that are in vehicles nowadays, um, if you get that stuff on the lumber, it's trash. Yeah. And with the price of the lumber being what it is, we don't want to just throw that stuff out. Um, so switching over to the composite slowly um, and just you know gives us a little bit more flexibility to have different material. Right. The other thing I'm noticing is every time we open up a cabinet, lights come on for that cabinet too, along with the handrails. Correct. So it's all about lighting. Um, you know. So much of this stuff is, you know, working in the middle of the night, you have the 2 a.m. call, you're looking at a compartment trying to find something, you need to see what you're doing. So having sufficient light in each compartment on the outside of the truck for the scene, that's all this truck is, is bringing to you. It's bringing you lights everywhere you can think about. All right. What are the little compartments underneath? So we have a couple different things. So this is mainly bottle storage. Okay. Um, so these are spare uh, places for air cylinders for the, the packs. Okay. Um, we also have different access to, uh, so bottles here, and then these are our side anchors. Gotcha. So again, we have that portable winch that we can move all over the place. Yeah. Each one of these ports can can uh, have power and the hookup for the winch, so we can move that anywhere on the truck. To nice. Set it up. Okay. More tools. Yeah. So um, we've got. This is more the Tim the Tool Man kind. Yes, of exactly. Setup here. Exactly. Love it. So a lot of cutting stuff and uh, we're mostly cutting. Okay. <laughs> um, so what we have right here, make sure I'm right, I'm going to kind of test myself. Mm -hmm. It looks like we have an impact gun, we yep. have a drill, we have a couple cutoff tools, a band saw, mm -hmm. and over here you got a circular saw and some saws off. Yes, exactly. That's right. So yeah, that's a full garage. I'm just yeah, saying. <laughs> absolutely. Yep, yeah, a little bit of everything. Yeah. We just, all we're missing is the pack out system, pretty, right. pretty much. Right. So what's unique about this is this saw right here. We normally don't see this on any kind of rescue vehicle. Why yeah. would you have to have a table saw or an angular uh, chop saw? Well, so we have so much lumber on the truck, and it's of whatever size it is, because you know lumber doesn't expanding track, right? So this is this is how if we need to get it into a particular space, the wrong size, like we can cut it on scene and do what we need to do. It's pretty slick. Yeah. Thinking thinking ahead of the game, that's for sure. So this is probably, probably, I'm sure you're familiar with a lot of this stuff, right? So uh, these are all our inflatable uh, pads so we can do lifts of the different weights and 
uh, a mounts more a different kind of strut system than you saw on the other side. And then we've got our Homatro tools. And uh, these are the battery powered ones. Okay. As you can see. Yeah. And so these are your, your spreaders, is your cutters. Yep. Uh, and stuff like that. This is what normal people would refer to as the jaws, jaws of, of life. life. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's awesome. Back in the day when you engaged your, your generators, it was a lot like a pump on an engine. So you had to shift it, everything was done by the driver's seat. Right. It's all push button now. Okay. So you have the option that once you're out of the truck, you have a remote control on this side and a remote control at that side. So if you happen to be at the air panel and you need to turn on the seam lights, you can turn the generator and all the seam lights on remotely from over there and from over here. Okay, okay. That was going to be my next thing is, you know, many, back in the day, the, the generators we had pretty much took up an entire compartment. But I noticed a lot of the lights are LEDs and stuff like that. Where is your generator on these trucks? So the generator on this truck runs off of the engine. So it's a power takeoff off of the engine. It's a 35 kilowatt generator. Um, and we just shift it by a push of the button, and then we've got 35 kilowatts of power. Wow. Um, that comes in handy. Um, we've, we've done various things our, on our old truck. We actually had to power a care center. Okay. Um, during one of the hurricanes, we lost power, and we, had, we ran one of our core reels to each floor, and we powered that facility until they were able to get their generator up and running. Very nice. So we do, uh, as we said before, we do confined space, we do water rescue, and uh, swift water, and everything in between. Yeah, okay. So here's uh, a majority of the stuff for that. So we've got all of our rope bags. We've got the uh, SAB or SABs. Yep. 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 Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. That's for the yeah. more confined space, right? Yep. yep. Exactly. Okay. Um, and then the extra tanks and, and the like. Is that a camera box then also? Do you have cameras for the confined space? So what this is actually for, this is a communication system. Okay. Um, so in cases where you're not you're able to use, you know, normal site-to-site -site conversation, it goes through the umbilicals. So each one of these hoses has air uh, for the breathing and okay. also has a uh, communication line. Nice. So we'll have a voice box on your throat so okay. you can be able to wear a mask and still have clear transmission. Um, and it's all connected through those lines. And then this is all the, the operator equipment. This is state of the art, Chief. Absolutely <laughs> pretty gorgeous. Pretty wild stuff. Yeah. And we got one more cabinet up front here. Yep, so pretty standard stuff. We got our speedy dry, another fire extinguisher, and then just more sort of firefighter tools. Right? Yeah. Our axes, halogens, bolt cutters. Yeah, your bike poles, your, yep. you know, everything that you need for the firefighting aspect of it, not necessarily for rescue or vehicle rescue. That's correct. Yeah, but a, big, we, oh, sorry. a big thing that we ran into with our old truck is that it was set up, it was a rescue, and it, we weren't really thinking about the fire side of things. So if you got out, halogen bar with this apartment, pipe pole was in this department yeah, yeah. and your can is in a totally different one. Right, so right. we really set it up so that all of our, you know, first in EMS stuff has its own compartment. Same with the fire stuff. And it's, you know, as simple as we put yeah, fire yeah. cross on here. So I noticed know. that on the other side, you had the EMS one. Yep, so you can just say, hey, you need a pipe pole, that's the compartment it's in. You come in, you've got all your firematic stuff right here ready to go. And then we go back up to the uh, captain's chair or the yeah, and I do want to officer point to, seat. I do want to point that out because you have, we keep talking about lights and lights everywhere, right? Uh -huh. So like everything, even even up top here. Oh so, yeah. Right, so if we're on the side of the road or something, it's a typical sort of, you know, police car, like go around. Right. But even that little detail, I think is a really nice thing that's been thought of. Right, right. And basically here we have access to radios and our tablets. So when we're doing patient care reports and stuff like that, we have Oh, okay. mapping, we can do that here as well. Okay, so you're a countywide dispatching system and that goes through that uh, tablet kind of thing? So this is this is not a, uh, an MDT. We have that in a couple of our vehicles which we're doing upgrades as we speak, but this one is primarily just an iPad with the apps that we use on a regular basis. Okay, fair enough, yeah. fair enough. Uh, but we're able to talk to the county, we're able to talk to uh, all the different response uh, channels that we need to with the various radios, as right. well as the PA system. Very cool. Um, and then just going into this compartment, so this is really like our primary extrication equipment, um, just right off to the front. So if we have to nose into a situation and have our a quick access, it's all of our hydraulic tools ready to go, um, all of our kind of our first in extrication equipment. Right. And, and you actually have two sets, so you can work on both sides. So if you have two victims that you got to work on either side, you can, you know, go right to work. You don't have to pass Absolutely. that tool all the way around the truck. Yep, and, and another big plus for this truck is we don't have any mounted equipment that's stuck to the truck. So there's no pumps on the truck. There's no hoses that run back to the truck. It's all battery powered. Right. Um, and we're currently in a transition between the generations. So we've got the first generation of, of Hamashiro battery powered, and then we actually have the newest stuff that's, that's also waterproof. So if we have to do something with a vehicle like underwater, okay. we have the ability to do that as well. Man, this thing is awesome. Well, Chief, thank you so much for bringing us around. Thank you all for watching. This was another episode of Station Rigs at the Princeton First Aid and Rescue Squad. 
Uh, we appreciate you guys watching. Do us a favor, hit that subscribe, hit that notification, smash those like buttons. We really appreciate it. Make a comment below and uh, we'll see you again next week. Battery's dead. <laughs> Ari, you got yours, brother? Yeah, just give me that camera. Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. 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 I like that one. It only took me a whole block to get it. <laughs>